Hello again. I'm in my chair of wisdom to give my daily podcast. Uh, today's focus will be on the on Krav Maga. Uh, Amy Lichtenfield uh, has a special place, and I hope I pronounced that name correctly, has a special place in my heart because uh, my grandfather actually survived uh, Auschwitz. He hid as an orphan in Paris, France, in a Catholic church. He was on the way to Auschwitz with the rest of his family when a nun uh, passed him off as a young Catholic orphan, and he survived wartime Paris, invasions and all. Uh, he, he later had bad luck being drafted after he immigrated to the United States into the Korean War, and he once wrote, he wrote a book and he was knighted in France for his, for his wartime story, and he occasionally visits, but on occasion he'll mention things to me that, uh, make you turn your head a little. Uh, there was at one point he was uh, in basic training when his drill sergeant ordered him to attack for self-defense. And my grandfather uh, proceeded to blow out his sergeant's knee because that's how they were taught to deal with Nazis in the street. Krav Maga is, a, is not a modern martial art. It's, it's conveyed quite often as a modern martial art. Primarily because of its efficacy, sorry for that, its ability to draw on multiple martial arts in their efficacy and combine them together. To begin with, uh, let's start with Taekwondo. It's considered a traditional martial art, and yet Krav Maga predates it by a number of years. It's a, it's a traditional martial art, and... There are two main schools now that have evolved in recent years in, during the Cold War and in the aftermath in the proxy wars being fought in the Middle East. To begin with, uh, I'm, I'm trained in both American Krav Maga and Israeli Krav Maga, and there are noticeable differences between the two. To begin with, um, let's, let's ignore the commercialism. Uh, American Krav Maga is designed specifically to, within one to three moves, completely incapacitate the target. And we don't just mean incapacitate as in control, we mean injure or kill. There was one battle, for example, in the war in the Middle East, where the battle was fought in a cemetery, and they had to go in with hand-to-hand -hand combat. We had no losses, we won, specifically because we used American Krav Maga. It's no joke. It... It's, it's very dangerous, and when you use it, it's potentially lethal. Now, the difference between it and Israeli Krav Maga is... Israeli Krav Maga is not about destroying your opponent. It's about subduing and controlling the situation. The, this is why when you see the videos of people doing Krav Maga from Israel, you see them doing a lot of submissions, you see them doing a lot of control tactics in how they engage in the Krav Maga. Now, there are similarities, uh, spatial awareness, uh, bursting, um, a tough physicality that's willing to use virtually any weapon at their disposal, and groin is key to Krav Maga. Uh, but that's not the only case. Um, the elbows come from, the elbows and knees come from Muay Thai, the roundhouse kicks come from Taekwondo. You can find technique after technique in this martial art, but it evolved as a street fighting martial art designed to fight Nazis. Now, one of the issues that I have is people mistake American Krav Maga for Israeli Krav Maga. I don't want to say that Israeli Krav Maga is softer because it has a different point. The point is to control the situation. The American Krav Maga is to completely eliminate the situation. Once we strike, once we do our burst, we want that combat completely over and done with. We don't want to have to engage in the enemy again. We're not worried about the laws. We're worried about ending their life, ending the fight, and moving on. Israel is a contentious zone with many political problems, and because of that, it's affected how they have hand-to-hand -hand combat. Because of this, you can't just destroy your enemy, because every time you do so, you end up creating more. The trick is then to subdue them and remove them from the population. So because of this, when you see them doing protests, you're not going to see uh, Israeli soldiers go into Krav Maga mode and destroy participants and protesters usually. Usually what you see is them attacking protesters, but usually when provoked first, which is very different. 
American Krav Maga will almost always have you attack first without mercy and to completely eliminate the target in any way possible. There are no rules, as a way to put it. Sparring in American Krav Maga is not fun and it's done rather rarely in my experience. Um, another notion I wanted to talk about, there's not much I want to talk about with Krav Maga. Um, there's a common misnomer these days with the advent fad of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu of ground combat, but the founder of Krav Maga himself has even said that he's very leery of any combat that exists on the ground. And the reason for that is just because a fight ends up on the ground doesn't mean it has to stay on the ground. In fact, when, when you fight on the ground, you're playing by their game, and that goes entirely against that burst that Krav Maga is, is known for. You don't want to get caught in that kind of struggle. You want to strike, 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 move on to the next target, because for all you know, that's one enemy out of ten that you might have to fight. Uh, and, and another few issues that have come up, um, I don't, it's a martial art that's doable by any sex, um, it primarily has its place in the military, it's not a civilian martial art, specifically because you can't take this into the ring, if you do so, you will probably end up going to jail. Chances are if you use it in the street, you're going to jail. Um, it's a Effective, it's, effect, I cannot say that word. Its effectiveness is, is based solely on its ability to target vital points, bursting, spatial awareness to be aware of threats before they happen, and to deal with them accordingly. Krav Maga is the martial art that first came up with using clothes, for example, as weapons in self, for self-defense, which is another video I've, I've covered. Uh, Krav Maga is one of my specialties, the the main martial arts that I practice are Hapkido, uh, American Krav Maga, uh, Chung Kwan and Mudo Kwan Taekwondo, and Bakwa Zhang. Uh, I throw in Kendo footwork because it allows for the bursting to be more effective. Um, there's no there's no reason not to mix martial arts when they can work together. That's pretty much the core philosophy behind Krav Maga. Uh, I guess, I guess for now, that's all I have to say on the subject. I hope you found that interesting. It has a very rich history. It dates back farther than Taekwondo, and yet it's considered a modern martial art because it doesn't really have kata. It doesn't really have a belt system. It doesn't follow the rules. It's not going to. It's designed to fight and kill Nazis. It worked, and it still works. Israel still exists today, and their military is one of the best in hand-to-hand -hand combat that there is. So I just want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys take the time to practice a bit of Krav Maga. It will change how you approach martial arts and how you live your life. At the very least, spatial awareness is incredibly is an incredibly useful skill. Half the battle is seeing the battle coming before it happens, and uh, a lot of people are not aware of how to do that. Krav Maga will teach you how to do that, and how to respond fast. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.